Wall Street coming off its worst week since the financial meltdown of 2008. The Dow is shedding nearly 6.5% of its total value, raising worries America is on the edge of a double-dip recession. Here now, Ed Butowski, managing partner of Chapwood Capital Investment Management. Hi, Ed. Hi, thanks. Well, first of all, tell us what is a double-dip recession? What would it look like? If I'm a layperson out there, how would I know if we're in the middle of one? And also, what's the likelihood of that happening? Well, the likelihood gets greater and greater, and very simply, a double-dip recession is just going back into another recession, and that is two successive quarters of negative GDP growth or very slow GDP growth. You know, some people will actually say we never really came out of that recession. Um, you know, it's still debatable, but that's what people are looking for. I don't think we're there, and I don't think we're going to get there. But uh, people are very concerned about it, without question. Yeah, because, of course, they're looking at the, the numbers tumbling on Wall Street and then their investments mm -hmm. uh, going down the drain as well. But you still say at this point, don't get paranoid, right? Now, you shouldn't get paranoid. I mean, what's happening right now is you have to think about the world economy like a, a, a 747 and has four different jets. One of, excuse me, four different engines. One of those engines is North America, one is Europe, one is Asia, and the other is the emerging markets. And when one of those engines starts to falter and doesn't do well, like Europe isn't mm -hmm. right now, and the United States isn't functioning well, the plane doesn't crash. The other engines pick up and it continues to move along. Eventually, these other engines, these two engines, Europe and North America, are going to get fixed and everything's going to be fine. We're just not in this world crisis, which everyone seems to think. The economy in the United States is suffering. It's not doing great. But stock prices, I still think, are going to go substantially higher from here. Okay, and you seem to be pretty calm about it, Ed, but there are people who are concerned about what's happening in the European mm -hmm. region. So how does the U.S. buffer uh, its economy in terms of what's happening over there? Well, it's tough, too. I mean, we are in a world economy, and everything that happens throughout the world, literally, we can find a dotted line back to the United States. So everything that happens all over the world does impact us. So we can't be buffered from it. We just have to understand it and figure out how we can work with it. A lot of these major events that we've seen happen, mm -hmm. Egypt, uh, the tsunami in Japan, what's going on in Greece right now, all of these events are, you know, are earth shattering in a lot of cases. They make good headlines, but they don't necessarily impact us economically. We have to be careful because Europe could spread. There could be a contagion because everything's systemic. We have to be very careful. When we start hearing France and Italy and Spain, then we start to really get our attention. But right now, I'm okay. You know, we certainly have to watch how things develop. But I just don't believe it's going to be a major impact just yet on the United States. Okay. Well, well but Ed, speaking of uh, getting uh, our attention, do you think uh, our, sure. our lawmakers uh, in D.C. are paying attention, close enough attention to what's happening in the world market as they play political hot potato coming up with budget proposals and ways to bolster the U.S. economy. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great point. I mean, I've, I've been very outspoken against the policies of this administration and the, the entire team on how they're handling things in the United States. Um, you know, we have to take care of what's going on here um, in this country. I know Geithner went overseas to try to show, you know, the European community how to deal with the crisis. Um, the, you know, you know, the central bank is helping out quite a bit. They're doing what their role is by offering and giving some short-term money. Uh, we've got to get our engine going first because our engine is the most important engine when you look at that plan and our engine has to get going first and I don't believe the policies that we have in place right now are going to fix it um, but you know what maybe we'll have a new pilot uh, you know next November right well okay but you know what uh, it doesn't matter who who the pilot is and how well he or she flies if the plane is broke if the engines aren't working the plane they're gonna fly <laughs> so I ask you Ed <laughs> what's the best way to fix the US engine well, it, it's real simple. I mean, the only thing we can do right now is cut corporate taxes, cut individual taxes. We all say it, but that's what we need to do. We need to get rid of the, the wet blanket that's on this economy. We need to let people know that it's okay to go out and take some risk and put their money you know, out there and, and get it invested into the overall market because that's also going to help the overall economy. Right now, there's just a lack of clarity across the board. People don't know what is going to come down you know, next from Washington. And because of that, we need to really get rid of all the regulations and do everything that the Republicans are saying right now because it's obvious it's not working at this point and there's and we have to get some clarity going forward and the way we're going to get that is by having something different you know there's an old line when riding a dead horse dismount and right now we need to change and we're not changing and that's what you know one of the fears is over the next 12 months is that we're not going to see any changes that are you know really uh, you know material and that's one of the biggest fears but what we need to do is we need to change the tax structure that's one of the biggest All problems right, in Ed. this country
Hey, listen, uh, there's some uh, jockeys there jockeying for, for position in Orlando, as you know, today. So we'll see if they'll yes. be the person to uh, challenge the current jockey in place, so to speak. Ed Butowski. That's right. Thank you very much.